You never realize how much something means to you until it is taken away. I never knew just how much I would miss face-to-face -face communication until all I had was a video chat. Wishing for alone time and peace turned into missing the noise of a crowd. Because the only voice I can hear now is my own. Now I'm just here, coping, occupying my busy mind with creative ways to silence the overwhelming longing for raw connection. Trying to make the loneliness feel more like solitude. And on those days when I just cannot handle the voice in my head anymore, and everyone else's lives seem so unrealistically perfect, I find myself going back into a welcoming corner of the internet, with stories inviting you into people's hearts. And once again, I feel connected. Due to the coronavirus, I can't go back to Nottingham for university at the moment, so uh, my student accommodation is here in Cyprus. I can't taste that at all. I still am suffering with no taste and smell after three months, um, which is quite hard because especially at Christmas time when I didn't, I couldn't taste my Christmas meal, which I love because my mum does it so nice. Um, I usually wake up on Christmas day to the smell of her cooking the turkey, but this year obviously I didn't. And I think Christmas day this year was a day to just forget about the virus altogether, but obviously some people can't. and. I couldn't as well because I just couldn't taste my Christmas meal and I also got a lot of chocolate in my stocking which I couldn't taste which was quite sad. Most students are asymptomatic but um, some of us did get symptoms which was you know surprising because you'd think that you're healthy you just wouldn't but I only had the other symptoms for about two weeks but um, obviously my taste and smell that's persisted until now. Um, I'm hoping to get it back in the new year um, but I'm not sure with the new strain. I am a bit cautious um, about going back to the UK and because I just don't want to get it again and have no taste and smell again, I don't know how it works. But I think I'm more worried about my flatmates than getting it because they haven't got it so they don't know how um, hard it will be. I mean, they might be asymptomatic, but who knows. I'm just really hoping to get it back in the new year. I was in my student accommodation straight up until Christmas and you know it wasn't easy it wasn't easy at all um you know at uni you do feel very lonely and isolated and very much on your own because at the end of the day when you're in a lockdown it's all you've got you've really got to fend for yourself there is nobody that can come and help you so you've got to get up you've got to get dressed you've got to make yourself ready for it whereas if you went in person you have to do that in order to learn whereas at home you can literally just do it from bed so prior to covid i already did struggle with mental health problems it did it did enhance it it does take time for me to adapt to things and especially with something like anxiety it's like you've got to know what you're doing at all times you because if you don't then it's just going to stress you out my lowest point was probably the beginning of lockdown two the shock of everything closing everything going back to fully online but partially and you just feel like you're all over the place my friends and my family were my biggest support network it teaches me that perseverance and resilience is the most important aspect that you could have as a person especially if you want to do something that's very competitive in industry in the future i feel like this is this whole experience of doing university in COVID has taught me a lot and it's taught me to keep pushing, you know, keep plodding on with radio. So I've bought myself a microphone. I've spent a lot of money on equipment that I can do at home because it's just enhancing my skills further. It's helped me so much in terms of doing remote radio shows. It's so important to keep your friends and family close. Um, I find it rather frustrating that my grandma works in a co-op. Everyone else can see her, but I can't go into a house. It's It's been hard. You know, you've got to think of like the most finer things in life. I think that's the most important thing. Well, to be a student in lockdown is very 
challenging right now it's online so you're literally at home and obviously studying to be happy in my own company just means I can be free to do whatever I want no one can tell me oh you can't do this you can't do that I customize my hair free time I also play games that that's on TikTok I love so much since September I've now been back in England the hardest part was being away from a strong and secure support system which I would have in Thailand with my friends and family who have stayed and live there. Home comforts are something I rely big on however of course I don't have everything that I can could have that remind me of home however I've been making it I've been creating the feeling of homeliness through little trinkets such as having little Polaroids from trips to like countries that I went to with my family that will feel very much like home as well as even my mask I bought it in Thailand made of the typical um, touristy Thailand material that you'll find which has been very comforting being able to wear it and feel safer when I am whenever I am outside disappointing times at the moment and it's disappointing that the whole year has had to be online and half of second year as well but I try and make the most of it I, that's why I'm, I've come back to uni so I can still enjoy the uni life as much as I can and um, like my fat we still do drinks and stuff and we still like walk around the uni like to try and get as much of the experience as we can um, but yeah it's disappointing but we try to make the most of it during lockdown I tried to experiment with different things that I would never do before. So I tried cooking for once. because <laughs> um, I used to put oven bits in, which isn't really very exciting. But now I've broadened my horizons, bought some spices, and learned about different cooking techniques and ideas. Um, I've also learned to eat healthier, which is part of the cooking, but, and the importance of exercise. Hiya, this is the UK's lockdown number three and I'm going to bring you along in a day in the life of Olivia in lockdown. Hi, my name is Kathleen and this is how lonely and isolated I have been feeling during the three lockdowns. During this third lockdown, I have ordered and received multiple parcels full of self-care and beauty products. Investing in such items have lifted and lightened my mood during these dark times. During Christmas, my birthday, and New Year's Day, it was like emptiness was taking over me and loneliness comes along with us. All my friends and family live in a teeny northern European country called Estonia. Getting dressed up and doing my makeup to either go to the supermarket or go on my daily walk, the only other sources of entertainment than my phone and Netflix, have uplifted my mood and mental well-being drastically. Although it was daunting moving to a foreign city in the middle of a pandemic, lockdown here started out alright. Security weren't too stressed about people mixing as they knew it was Freshers Week and people would be excited to meet new people. Of course after Freshers Week, my whole flat did end up getting COVID-19, which was nerve-wracking for everyone. It all feels a bit dramatic being cooped up inside your flat for two weeks without being able to properly exercise, as we were quite active in my flat. The girls had it worse than the boys, so they ended up looking after us quite a lot. In a way, this ended up as a weird kind of bonding exercise that brought us all closer. Some security guards would also come into the flats with body cameras to see how many people were in flats. If they thought that there was too many, they'd line us all up and record our faces or take our ID passes. They would walk around the outside of our accommodation, shining flashlights into our kitchen windows to see how many people were there and if they needed to break up any parties. This was quite scary as it was quite a new thing for all of us and we didn't really know what was going on. 
However, over time we've got used to this, so we've all become quite good at hiding under kitchen tables and in bathrooms. On particularly busy nights, security would check the kitchens as usual, but also check our bedrooms sometimes, by tapping on the windows or shining their flashlights in. After we went home for Christmas and the third lockdown was announced, we were told that we wouldn't be allowed back to our halls until late February. During this time, I've had to find ways of keeping myself sane throughout another isolation. At first, I found it very hard being back home, as I'd gone from hiding in wardrobes to now trying to do university back in my childhood bedroom. I've found that trying to keep a daily routine, along with a lot of exercise, is how I'm trying to structure my days to get through this lockdown.